Over the weekend, President Donald Trump spoke to a crowd of Jewish Americans in Las Vegas at an event sponsored by the Republican Jewish Coalition. And would you look at that? Sheldon Adelson, GOP mega donor, was in the front row listening to him speak. Now, throughout the course of this event, throughout the course of Donald Trump's speech, he spoke about Jewish Americans in a way that is problematic. He invoked a trope that Ilhan Omar was just criticized for supposedly using a couple of weeks ago. Now, did Sheldon Adelson, who was sitting in the front row, again, stop him and call him out for this? Absolutely not. So what is it, though? Let's get to what he said. What did he say that was so problematic? Here's a little clip of his speech. I stood with Prime Minister Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu. How is the race going, by the way? How is it? Who's going to win the race? Tell me. I don't know. Well, it's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. Two good people. Two good people. But I stood with your prime minister at the White House to recognize Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. The Golan Heights is uh, something I've been hearing about for a long time. The Golan Heights. So, I was talking to Ambassador Friedman, and not about this. They've been trying to get that approved, as you know, for 52 years. They wanted recognition from the. Now, it was subtle, but in case you missed it, what he said there was he referred to Benjamin Netanyahu as, quote, your prime minister to a crowd of Jewish Americans. Benjamin Netanyahu is not their prime minister. They're Americans. So obviously this is troublesome because this is an anti-Semitic trope that suggests that Jewish Americans have dual loyalty to Israel and that they view Benjamin Netanyahu as their prime minister when they're not actually living in Israel. They're Americans. So the problem is that people are going to chalk this up to Donald Trump just being Donald Trump and making an honest mistake. However, he did this multiple times. So as The Intercept's Robert Mackey explains, later in his address to the Republican Jewish Coalition gathering, Trump referred a second time to American Jews as if they were Israelis by saying that a victory for Democrats in the 2020 election, quote, would cripple our country and very well could leave Israel out there all by yourselves. Several journalists expressed discomfort as Trump went on to suggest that his Jewish supporters should explain to some of your people in business and finance that they should stop opposing his imposition of tariffs on imported goods. Yeah. These are your people, Donald Trump. These are Jewish Americans. You're speaking to an event sponsored by the Republican Jewish Coalition. There are no Republicans in Israel. So, obviously, if Ilhan Omar said what Donald Trump said, there would be universal condemnation. But because, you know, since we live in a fair world, the media, since he said this, has been ripping him apart nonstop. Republicans have come out to unequivocally condemn what he said. Democrats have been laughing. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. We don't live in a fair world, and none of that happened. You know, aside from the Anti-Defamation League vocalizing some concerns and, you know, a few peeps here and there, there was pretty much silence. And again, just a couple of weeks ago, Ilhan Omar was accused of invoking an anti-Semitic trope when she said, look, maybe it's the case that American lawmakers, not Jewish people, but American lawmakers have dual loyalty because they're taking money from lobbying firms like APAC, and then they're doing the bidding of their donors. We do the same thing uh, when it comes to the NRA. We call out the Republican Party for being beholden to them, and progressives call out Democrats for being beholden to Wall Street. So money in politics is an issue, 
And that's what she was speaking to. But nonetheless, she was accused of invoking an anti-Semitic trope. In other words, she was taken out of context and smeared because of it as an anti-Semi. Now, Ilhan Omar noticed all of this, of course, because it's a double standard. And she tweeted about this, saying, My lord, forgive my people, for they do not know. Couldn't have said it better myself. That's exactly it. Trump says something that is obviously troublesome at a minimum to be extra charitable here. He said something that was ignorant. Silence. Ilhan Omar makes a point and then gets straw manned, taken out of context, and we see universal condemnation by mainstream media by both parties. Tells you everything you need to know and why progressives such as myself warned people like Chelsea Clinton about not taking seriously the arguments of bad faith actors that just wanted the Democratic Party to turn against one of their own for their own political reasons. Mike is a total loser, so don't hit the subscribe button, okay? And whatever you do, folks, do not hit the notification bell either. Mike treats me so unfairly.